Hi YouTube, this is RobinNuts1 here, and today I have a another Arrow review. So let's get started. Episode 7, Muse of Fire, marks the first appearance of the Huntress, a DC character who originally belonged to the Batman branch of characters. And it's interesting that they add did the added the Huntress to Green Arrow, um, to the Green Arrow branch of the series. Because, um, the Huntress sort of has the same skill sets as Oliver Queen. And these two episodes that I'll be reviewing, and, and episode 8, have this, you know, have the same similarities to them. Well, between Huntress and the Hood guy, or the Vigilante, because he's not called Green Arrow yet. Anywho, um, this marks the second appearance of the Huntress in a live-action TV appearance. She first appeared in the Birds of Prey TV series. In that show, um, as opposed to Helena Bertinelli, um, that show portrayed Helena Wayne, the daughter of Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle. This version of Huntress is more realistic and direct from the comics. She is the Helena Bertinelli character. A lot of sense to have her meet Oliver as they are both the same type of hero and character, making for more interesting parallels in the story. The episode begins with Oliver taking his mother out for dinner. As, as he drives towards Queen Consolidated, he sees his mother and Bertinelli and and the Bertinelli contact get shot by a person dressed in the motorbike gear and con and her face is concealed by a helmet. This is later revealed to be Helena, who is targeting members of the Bertinelli crime family. Oliver decides to go undercover in order to uncover why his mother was shot. It's revealed that the Bertinelli family are losing money and they're desperate. This episode deals with Oliver's secrets and lies he has to keep in order to keep being the hood or the vigilante or whatever they call him. Because this show needs to give him his name sometime soon. Oliver Queen says, The hood is a lame name. Anywho, Helena understands um, what Oliver is going through. And we see a nice parallel between the two characters. At this stage, Helena is not the Huntress, and is actually different, and differs from the comic book, as she never witnessed her parents' death, rather witnessing her fiancé's death, which changed her and made her become Huntress. The parallels between the two characters are very subtle, Oliver and Helena both have had tragedies in their lives that have changed them. Helena is able to understand Oliver's vendetta because she herself is going through the same thing. She can identify with Oliver's crusade better than, say, Thea or Moira. They like each other because they're able to be themselves 
rather than having to live a lie around other people. And Oliver desperately wants someone that he can trust and be more open with. And Helena wants someone to take away the pain she feels for losing her fiancé. Helena states a line that seems familiar to Batman. It begins. She says revenge is justice as opposed to sometimes revenge and justice are the same thing. And I really need to stop quoting the Nolan films. You're directly, you are directly ripping off. The Nolan film. It's ridiculous. Arrow, in season two, you don't need Nolan lines at all in that in that show. You are doing fine. You don't need to borrow from the Nolan trilogy. You're doing fine. Keep going as you are. And um, it's interesting that Helena states revenge is justice because, because Helena belongs to the Batman branch of characters, um, she is very much for revenge and whereas Batman is very justice and order and 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 order and um Helena sort of signifies the gray area superhero and where and her entire character is based on this idea of revenge and although she considers herself to be a superhero she is willing to cross the line and I just think that's interesting because whereas we have Oliver trying to move away from the line, here's Helena crossing, you know, trying to cross the line. We, we see that Moira is now accepting Oliver's change. And in a discussion between Moira and Thea, Moira tells Thea that rather than judge Oliver on who he was, she should accept Oliver for who he is. Thea is very likeable in this episode, which is very weird for me to say because I've been hating her character. It, it marks where Thea is going to go towards in towards the season as it progresses. She acknowledges that she has been harsh towards her older brother and seeks to make amends with him. This is good as Thea begins to accept Oliver for who he is. So we don't have to deal with the obsessive whining that Thea has been doing lately. Lastly, we learn that Tommy is related to John Barrowman, who is Merlin. I just think that is so cool. Like, when I first watched the episode, um, just seeing... Tommy and Tommy meet Merlin and Tommy meet John Barrowman. I was like, brilliant. The guy, the guy who sleeps around with, with men, and you have him be Tommy's, uh, and shoots Daleks and turns into a face of bow. And yeah, have him as Tommy's father. I was like, brilliant. 
I just love it. Anyway, um... And also, another thing that I really like is Tommy and Merlin have the same relationship as Lex and Lionel Weaver. Unlike Lex, Tommy doesn't have that stigma of he will definitely turn evil. And Tommy doesn't and Tommy doesn't have the same qualities that make Lex the character he was in Smallville. And and because he's that typical playboy, unlike Oliver, um because Tommy hasn't grown up and he is effectively cut off from his money by his father, who nastily points out that he is lazy and that it it's his money as opposed to Merlin's money. And I just thought that was absolutely brilliant. Because here you have the darker aspect of Tommy's character and we, we also have that the relationship between father and their sons, which is another theme that has been playing on throughout the show. And, uh, and even as I say this, I've just thought that actually it's a theme of the episode as well. Sort of, we have Oliver trying to redeem his father. We have, we have um, the Huntress sort of wanting to kill her father. And then we have this relationship between Tommy and his father, where Tommy hates his father. And I just think it's such an interesting parallel between these three characters. So Tommy turns to Laurel, who he, who he has been dating, and we see a clear sign that Tommy is going to go through a character arc now. And that will change him from the man that he is now to a very different man l later. Which is a much needed change for Tommy. As his character can, can go essentially anywhere now without that stigma of this character who is going to turn even ten seasons. Hint, hint. Smallville. <laughs> this episode is a good introduction to the Huntress character, and it shall be interesting to see where it goes as season continues. Also, Walter returns home in this episode. Now, the first Huntress and um, is actually kind of good. The second one, not so much. And that's where I'm going to leave you off with. Um, thank you very much for listening to me, and I shall talk to you all later. Bye.